This is a solvable problem. I mean, one of the most amazing things about what we do is that we can solve our problem. Uh, so Charity Water is, is bringing clean and safe drinking water to people all around the world. When I started it, um, that was half of the mission. The other thing that was really important to me personally was to reinvent charity and reinvent giving for this huge group of disenchanted people. So the top excuses that people would have were, you know, kind of around the black hole of giving. And they'd say, I give money to a charity. I don't really know where it goes. Uh, I don't know that it helps anyone. You know, I'm throwing it into a black hole. And uh, I realized that people are really jaded about charities. So I thought maybe a new model could um, allay some of those fears or get in the way of some of those excuses. So I thought, okay, well, let's think about the money, you know, the whole black hole thing. What if there was a way to use 100% of the money people gave you only for the water projects and just take that whole staff and admin and office thing off of the table. Give that to another group of people who really get it, a kind of wiser group of people um, who aren't disenchanted with charity. Uh, so that was kind of big idea number one. Uh, open up two bank accounts, put all the public's money in a bank account, don't touch it except to fund water projects, and then open up another bank account and then that's kind of my responsibility, that I would go and fight uh, to get our staff paid fight to keep the lights on in an office. The second big idea then was, uh, okay, we have this 100% model. Because the money is existing in one place and it's never touched except to directly fund projects, let's prove it. Let's prove every single project. And you know, this was really disruptive at the time. Uh, you know, I, I had realized that for the cost of about $100, you could buy a, a handheld GPS device and you could turn it on and you would know where your water project was anywhere in the world by taking a picture of it. So we said, you know, hey, this is simple from day one. We're never funding projects unless we can be guaranteed that they exist. And we're going to make all of that information public on Google Earth for better or for worse. This will be uh, a way for us to go back and monitor the effectiveness of these projects over time. But at least we know where the money went uh, and the, the wells have been built and either clean water's flowing uh, or it's not. The third idea was uh, a little softer, and that was to build a brand. And Charity said, I thought, just had some of the most appalling marketing, uh, branding, websites, uh, storytelling. You know, there's a, a quote by Nick Kristoff that I talk about a lot. He wrote in the New York Times that you know, toothpaste is peddled with more sophistication than all of the world's life-saving causes. So that, that to me was completely broken, and I thought uh, Charity Water could change that because I thought I knew what good design looked like. I thought I had good taste. Uh, I kind of needed to um, in the aesthetics I was exposed to over the decade in nightlife and some of the places that we went to and the uh, invitations that we designed, et cetera. And I thought to solve a problem this big, you would need to develop an epic brand. Uh, you would need a, a brand that rivaled a, a Nike or a, um, an Apple, uh, a brand people could really trust. And then maybe you could help uh, a billion people get clean water. I think not having the international development experience, not having the traditional uh, way uh, you're trained to start a charity actually helped. I mean, day one to start Charity Water was throw a party. It was the only thing I knew how to do to raise money because we used to make money when we threw parties. When we took the $15,000 we raised, again, not much, but you know, wanting to show them and connect them to what their dollars had actually done, we, we went to northern Uganda and we built three wells and we fixed three wells in a refugee camp. And then we sent the photos back to the 700 people that had attended. And that was so powerful. Uh, people never expected to hear from a charity again. In fact, they even got a free drink out of the deal. So you could argue that the, the party was actually pretty boring. I mean, that's a, that wasn't a very creative way to raise money. I think what we did creatively there was, uh, was closing this loop and showing people where their money went. We just tried so many things. We got into the e-card space. We started selling $20 e-cards for every imaginable holiday. And what we loved was the ability to connect a sender and a receiver uh, with a project. We got into product marketing. We threw events, um, exhibitions. So that was really our story. It was, it was kind of on repeat, creative ways to, to uh, 
uh, to show people what was going on around the world. Um, but a year in, uh, we had an anniversary coming up, and you know, I thought, oh, well, we could throw another party. You know, I could use my 32nd birthday and call in a bunch of favors again. And then as I thought about it, I realized, you know, the, the party didn't really scale. I thought, well, what if I gave up my birthday, just skipped the entire planning of the event altogether, and I asked everyone I knew to donate $32 my age, uh, and 100% of the money would go, and then I would fly to Africa on my birthday, we would drill a well, and via satellite, we would send it to all of the donors. And I thought, all right. Well, I'm not the only one born in the month of September, so I uh, convinced 92 other people to give up their birthdays and do the same thing. So it was a big idea, and at the, at the top level, we said, wow, we believe everybody can care about getting clean water to people on this planet, and everybody has a birthday. It's just been exciting to watch you know, this, this model evolve, and, and it's now obviously gone beyond September and October and November, and we have a huge fundraising platform where... Um, you know, thousands and thousands of people around the world. Some are giving up birthdays. Some are um, making scrapbooks. We've had people walk across America, bike across America. All these incredible stories emerging. And then that led us to this this big principle that was, uh, it can't be our story and grow. So this can never be about us. This has to be about intentionally giving the story away making it you know, their story, these incredible fundraisers out there, making it your story, uh, giving people just simple tools and a, and a process they can believe in that not only spends 100% of their money well, but shows them where it goes. So we're excited at the opportunity um, to use just such a simple idea as, uh, as giving up a birthday uh, to, to solve this, this massive problem. So if you guys like this video, check out some of the other videos on Thinker.